Hey everyone, Sarah with SewingPartsOnline.com and today we are going to learn how to master flannel. So if you've tried sewing flannel before and you're having some problems, it's okay. It's deceptively tricky. It, uh, the fabric shifts in kind of ways that you wouldn't expect to wove into, so it, it can be a little frustrating, but there are some tips to really tackle it and, and do a better job sewing. The first thing you want to know is that when you're going to the store to buy your flannel, buy more because it usually comes in a plaid. So you're going to have to get a little creative with uh, putting your patterns together. So you need more space for that. And because the edges fray so much, you need extra seam allowance to make sure, you know, nothing pokes out of your, of your, out of your seams when you're sewing. Also, there's two different kinds of flannel that you can buy. You can buy the really nice flannel that looks the same on both sides, or you can buy printed flannel. Printed flannel is also really, is nice. It's especially good for like kids clothes and stuff, but it doesn't have the pattern on the back. So you're going to have issues with grain with this kind of fabric. So if you're making some structured clothes, you need to have the flannel that's the same on both sides. So just remember that because this kind of flannel is going to go off grain. Another trick for flannel is to pre-wash. And by pre-wash, I mean pre-wash and dry. And do it twice if you want to because the flannel is going to seriously shrink. So make sure you go home, wash it real quick, and then take it to your iron. When you're ironing, you don't want to do any of the round, circular, or pushing motions. You need to lift, press, lift, press to prevent the flannel from warping out of shape. That's kind of the trick the flannel does is it warps so easily. So I like to use Best press, this is going to be your best friend. Flip your fabric to the wrong sides up, spray some best press, and press your iron, press your iron, press your iron. Like I said before, cutting has its own challenges. When you're buying flannel that has a nice plaid design on both sides and it's the same, you're pretty good with just cutting along the lines. In fact, when you buy your fabric, make sure when they're cutting it, they cut along the design lines. And you can usually get a good, you get your fabric really well on grain by following that. Now, if you have printed flannel, just know that this might not be printed and likely isn't going to be printed right on grain. So you're going to have to put this on grain and it might warp the lines a little bit. It's not, like I said, this isn't really good for items that require precision. These are great for like pajama pants, um, pillowcases, stuff like that. Otherwise get the flannel that has it on both sides. When you're cutting this and you get it on grain, just know that you're going to need more fabric to match the lines up. And that's really, really important to know that your lines are going to be matched up. Also know that it's going to create a little bit of a mess. We've got lots of fraying here. Um, you know, no matter what quality fabric you get with flannel, it's going to fray a lot and make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Okay, so you've done everything right. You've pre-washed your fabric, you've starched it, you've pressed it, you've cut it perfectly and it's nice and on grain. Now, what do you do when you get to the machine? Well, first, make sure you either have a 116 universal needle or a 9014 universal for thin lightweight flannel. Generally, you'll get longer use out of the 116 because flannel tends to really wear down your needle. You can use a general purpose foot or even like a um, straight stitch foot and a straight stitch plate. But if your feed dogs aren't doing so well or you're finding that your fabric is shifting, definitely use a walking foot and definitely pin a lot, especially when you're going to be doing line work and you need your pattern lines to match up. You need a pin and hand baste. Speaking of hand basting, when you go around curves, any kind of curve where the, where the fabric is cut along the bias, you want to stay stitch because flannel sometimes thinks it's a knit and it wants to stretch and move on you. So by stay stitching curves, arms and stuff like that, armholes, you're really going to get a better end product. So what about thread? Your best bet for flannel is to use a polyester. Even though you, even if you have like a cotton flannel, use the polyester. It's going to withstand the weight of the flannel better and it's going to be able to give a little bit of give with your flannel fabric. When you're at the machine, increase your stitch length to three millimeters. I have a lot of luck with that. Reduce your tension a smidge. And if you have a presser gauge, pressure gauge, 
reduce that a little bit. So you give your, you need your flannel room to move. Too much pressure is going to stretch it and cause pulling of the fabric and it'll look real wavy and weird. So how are you going to finish your seams? Well, it's going to be really, really fray. So if you have a serger, that is a great, 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 great way to finish your seams. However, not everybody has a serger, so you can use an overcast stitch. That's a great way to, to keep the fray under control and then apply some fray check on top. You can also get creative with your seams and do like a French seam. You can do a flat felled seam. Those are great ways to hide the fray without having to use like a zigzag or an overcast. And if you don't have a serger, it's a great, great option. And it looks nice and tailored. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. If you want to come and hang out with our sewing community, be sure to visit us on sewingpartsonline.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline, Twitter at sewingparts, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, we are everywhere. And be sure to subscribe by clicking that button below for more sewing videos.